talk about that transition into HBO Max. What differences have you been able to see with this season uh, that might be a little different or new than maybe season one and two? Well, I think the fans will notice a huge push uh, on publicity. Um, you know, you start to see, I just noticed a billboard on the way home the other night, driving home from downtown LA. Um, it's, you know, you start, you really feel this kind of muscular presence of a, a push to get the show out there um, and a lot of en en enthusiasm. I mean, we had it before with the DCU, but it was just a smaller house, smaller shop. And now this is, you know, the full force of a, a big network behind us. So we feel it. Moving to Gotham meant kind of looking at the show in a different way. San Francisco was a kind of gentler town it didn't have the edges that uh, gotham have and you can't we didn't want to pull any punches with gotham so uh, you know for music where we had extensive meetings about how we wanted the sound to uh, of the gotham to be well from a score level uh, also from sound design and then uh also looking at the what wayne manor is going to look like what the bat cave how we're going to do the bat cave we buffed out the bath cave and we made much bigger a much bigger set um we also expanded you know the world of gotham what did we want it to look like we were faced with the pandemic and people staying inside in toronto we were able to tell a story that we wanted to tell about gotham which is this town where people are you know constrained by fear and, and and fear dominates all. And so you're not, you know, it's not safe to go outside. And it's a town where there are, you know, areas of hope and people who want to make, have a forge a better life, but there's also a lot of people stuck in fear. And that becomes a theme for the season. I'm interested to hear this. A lot of people are asking and wondering, will season three be the best season yet? Do you have yeah. any opinion on that? And what would you say? I mean, that's up to, that's not my call. You know, we, we, we try to make every season the best season yet. I hope they think so. Um, I hope they like it. You know, we worked hard and I think there's, you know, you've seen some episodes and I think the season will do the talking for itself. And I want to ask about Jay Lykurgo, Tim Drake. Uh, he's coming into the mix. You know, all, people have seen him in the trailers yeah. and stuff. So people yeah. know he's coming. What kind of energy does he bring to the show? How does oh, he make man. things different? Buoyant. You know, um, he's so charismatic. He's so skilled and cra he has so much craft as an actor. Um, he really captures that energy of Tim Drake. I mean, we've had three kind of energetic presences come in of the, you know, people who are more on the innocent side uh, in our show. And we had Gar, we had Jason Todd, and now we have um, Tim Drake, people who are kind of enamored with this idea of, a, of the adult male superhero and what does it mean and the family and, and, and the kind of the, Mythos and a lot of these are creations of Jeff Johns, um, who's one of my partners and who's you know kind of an iconic creator in the comics book space. And it really captures Jeff's energy. And so what we wanted to do is really get a guy who was, of course, anytime when you have a story of someone who is, I'll just kind of backtrack a little bit, who really loves this myth, we want to kind of poke the myth and you know let the air out of it and let them find their own way into it. And that's really what. Jay was able to capture so well is Tim Drake's love for Batman and Robin and the Titans as in the books and then his, his own path there uh, and he's a tremendous actor and you know watch his TikTok if you if you want to have some fun. Obviously a big thing this season people are super excited about is Red Hood, Jason Todd, that backstory is super important in DC lore. Um, talk about the inspiration for uh, Curran Walters, Jason Todd, Red Hood combo because obviously you know we've got um, Batman the Killing Joke we've got back Batman Arkham Knight and also the comics the Death and the Family comics so there are a lot of places to pull from for this are there any specific places that you guys have pulled from for this character with Curran Walters or is this brand new Red Hood I don't think it's brand new Red Hood I mean you mentioned Death and the Family I think that they're Definitely comics we're pulling from that people will notice. I mean, it, it won't it won't be hard to notice that, but more from um, an origin notion, you know, from where we start and then what we do with it and spin it goes in our own way. I think that's been true of a lot of the characters. And that's always a challenge is trying to stay true to the to the core values or the core connection that the audience has with the characters, but trying to expand the character in our own more grounded, uh, more psychologically real, you know, 
television show uh so and drama so yeah that's it, it definitely comes from again a lot of these core ideas are coming from books and then we move them out of the books but you'll notice them for sure um with with red hood and, and jason's descent into red hood is a little different than how it happens in the books but a lot of the reasons are built both in our show and in the books a more general question about dick and corey uh, what can you kind of tell us about their dynamic or chemistry in season three? A lot of people wanting to see them back romantically. Yeah. Look, first of all, I want to say I love the fans' passion for that. I mean, it is really, it's, you know, it's in the books, but also there's a real chemistry between them. And I think that they are kind of the mom and dad of the team. Um, and so in, in that way, there's a desire a lot of good reasons to want them to be together. Um, dramatically, you know, we explore both of the characters individually. I felt, and you know, we always feel that, while I think that there is a real promise in the Dick Corey relationship, I want to explore some more Corey um, rather than the Dick Corey. And so we kind of go into her past um, and to why she is who she is, why she was sent and, and what that dynamic is with her sister. So there, there, but there are some bombshell drops, uh, bombshells dropped, at least one about Dick and Corey that you can, uh, a keen eye will be able to determine where we want to go with that. Are there any new characters slash old characters that we might be able to see brought back in from season one or two in season three? Good question. Um, None that I can really think of. I mean, obviously we have Jonathan Crane this season, um, a huge addition played by Vincent Carthizer. Um, and that's a major character who will, you know, explode across the screen, I think. Um, it's a it's a brother performance, a guy who really brought it is a game every day and he's a lot of fun and, and he's scary. And then also we have, you know, Barbara Gordon, um, a ter terrific add to the season, um, played by Svetlana Welch, who just, you know, knocks it out of the park and you know, someone who, who has used a chair and, and, um, and it was important for us to find somebody who had that experience. So it's been, um, you know, so there are people from the lore and from the from canon that you'll see, but the characters from season one and two, I don't think so. Any sort of expansion for Titans into the DC extended universe, a Man, lot of people wouldn't know. Yeah, we'll keep doing it as long as they, you know, as long as they ring the bell, we'll show up to fight. So there's a lot a lot of stories to tell here. Um, you know, we've already had, you know, nearly uh, 10 great characters and there's so many, the core four plus others we brought on, Hawk Dove, you know, Aqualad characters that we keep on bringing in um, that we want to, you know, we could cycle back, we could, we could continue to tell different stories. So the world is rich and expansive and we'll keep doing it as long as we can. And is there any talk of possible spinoffs? I know we've got like Doom Patrol and stuff. Uh, is there anything more with that that you can kind of hint to or talk about? Uh, no, but I wouldn't be surprised if they appeared on screen. Tens has really focused a lot on struggle, you know, and, and that's what Marv and George brought to it. It wasn't always, you know, it wasn't just a sidekick book. It was a book about kids struggling with parents and trying to come into their own. And that's the, if we've embraced one thing, um, and I think we've embraced a lot, but if we really embraced one thing coming down to it, it's that struggle. As the showrunner of, of Titans, this is going to be tough, but what is your favorite part about the show in general? Is there some one thing you can choose or even a, a couple of things? That's, I mean, that's a tough question. Um, there's so much that I love about the show. I mean, we've created a family in Toronto. We've created a, a family on screen. It's challenging like any family. It, uh, it, it taxes you and keeps you up late at night. I think I love what I love and when I saw, see it click and I just saw it when I was watching an episode last night is this real sense of hope that comes with unity. Um, and and when we get it and, and we really push against it because you know as you know fans complain about it all the time but we break them up all the time. We break people up and to me that's part of coming together. It makes the value of makes the feeling of coming together so much stronger. Um, and so that's what this season about is trying to find hope in a place that's hopeless. And I feel like a lot of that is about, you know, this Titans has been a struggle. It's taken five years to do three seasons. And um, yeah, and this year alone was 20 months to do 13 and we're still, we're still cutting.